Many people, many filmmakers, I, I, I want to ask, you know, how does it feel to have all of these people watch your film and be received in this way? How does that feel for you as an artist? Uh, it's kind of um, surreal because um, yeah. <clears throat> I spent so long, especially I think because I worked on this film largely alone a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and so now is the phase of the film where it's getting out and people are watching it. It's like I'm, I'm having a relationship with yeah. people or witnessing people have a relationship with the film. Whereas before it was kind of just me in a dark editing room or <laughs> with my camera, like, you know, yeah. hanging out with the subjects of the film. So <clears throat> I think in the beginning it was quite nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, just, you know, the usual anxieties of a filmmaker. Of creativity in general, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and, but now it's, I'm kind of, it's kind of easing into it and it's, it's quite, it's, yeah, it's quite beautiful to kind of see how, um, how people um, receive the film. Awesome. Awesome. So for our audiences, how about you tell us what is the film about? Sure. So <clears throat> Wajd is a film about three Syrian musicians that, um, I followed over the period of five years. Um, two of them I had met in Syria before the war in 2010, and um, the other I met afterwards in, in Istanbul. And it really um, explores um, their lives and their struggles um, living in exile and how music helps them to cope and heal and continue on and provide a sense of connection with their homeland. I'm a documentary head. <laughs> so, you know, I was, um, you know, we read a lot about things that go on in the world in the news, but, um, you know, through film and through documentary, you're able to empathize um, with these stories a lot more. And um, it was just an awesome, awesome piece of work. So uh, thank you for making, creating that. Thank you. Um, now you followed, you before we chatted, you know, you worked on this film for eight years and um you obviously knew the men that you followed for a very long time you know what's it like to kind of grow with people uh through film over such a long time telling their stories mm. it's um it's pretty powerful actually it was um a very um, intimate and rewarding experience um yeah. you know in the beginning there were the subjects of my film and then by somewhere in the middle they were actually like close friends of close mine close friends of yours yeah so and so it it was kind of um yeah it was it was beautiful being able to form those forge those relationships yeah. and to film in a way in which it it became <clears throat> the camera sort of became invisible after a certain yeah. point which I, which I really, re that's kind of what I really was that's striving your, that's for. That's goal. It's my goal. And <clears throat> I think also partially because I was, I was a lot of the time, most of the time I was like a one man band, kind yeah. of just me with a DSLR camera and getting you know, the stories, right. Getting the story. And, and so the, it became less felt, didn't feel like a film production as much as me hanging out with my close friends and you know, taking out the camera and filming yeah. during moments. And that just became a part of our time together. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was also beautiful to witness how they changed over time and um, and how I changed over time yeah. and how the film I initially wanted to make was, was actually not the film that I actually ended up making as well. And so, yeah. and part of that was how... Um, I grew myself as a person, as a yeah. filmmaker over the course of And kind of seeing the changes in yourself and the people and saying, this is the way that the story needs to be told. Exactly. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's really powerful that you take that. You know, as I watched the film, I I appreciated the intimacy. It does feel like the, the camera kind of disappears. And, it, you know, you can tell when there wasn't a big crew in the room, it's just you and the, and the subject and, they're, and you're talking, you get these really powerful moments and it's obvious that you built that relationship with them and they came, became comfortable and you got true uh, stories and, and sympathy in that way, um, which as the viewer, it resonated on me um, very powerfully. Um, so, you know, the men in your film experience a lot of trauma, um, you know, through, through their travels and dealing with music, but still find hope in music and faith. Um, in telling, in, before I get to that, uh, some of the parts of the, some of the parts of the film that stuck out to me the most was when 
they would tell a story that was just so traumatic and very deep. And then they would turn to the camera and smile or, or just this little bit of levity would come out. Uh, what do you think that is when it comes to trauma and coping? And what did you want the audience to kind of learn from those moments? Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, well, I think um, my sense of it is, and, and, and I'm saying my sense of it is because I didn't live through those, right. those same experiences, um, that after you've been through so much trauma um, and, you know, witnessed destruction and people close to you dying after, you know, after it's the first, second, third, after a while, it almost becomes like normalized yeah. in a way. And um, it's like there's a certain... What's the right word I'm using? Um, it's kind of there's there's a they smile, but you can tell that there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of pain behind. There's a it. lot of pain behind the smile too. So it's almost like a way of coping, like a way they've they've found a way to kind of cope with it. Just like, huh, yeah, another it, it's, bombing, it's another down thing. again, right? Yeah, next time it'll be me. Next time it'll be you, huh? Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like. So, I think that uh, that's kind of what it is you know after a while you, it just becomes normal and and normalized and it, and it kind of has to because i think your nervous system um can only take so much but so much you know so that's you know it. i um i'm glad you said that because as i was thinking about those reactions and trying to internalize it myself i was wondering if it's like always looking on the bright side you know, are always, you know, for every down, there's an up. Mm -hmm. But it didn't necessarily feel like that to me. It felt like a at wit's end, you still find love in those ways. And I don't know if I've, I, I may have to watch the film again to, <laughs> okay. to get that, but um, that's my interpretation from the audience, uh, from a viewer, you know, and I, I like to share that with you. So Sure. And you're, <clears throat> you're, and in, in, you're, I, I really believe that um, each audience member's um, impression of the film is um, just as equally valid to even what the filmmaker's intention may or yeah. may not have been because it's not about the filmmaker after a while it's about the film itself and each person has their own relationship with yeah. that and so um yeah i i think i i would i would agree with what you said yeah. <laughs> awesome awesome um i have another question for you just off the fly just because you mentioned something uh you mentioned intention mm -hmm. in the, in what you intended you also mentioned that it changed throughout the film as you grew Tell me a little bit more about, you know, when your intention of making a story, it changes throughout the film, but then someone in the audience interprets it totally differently. You know, how, how does that make you feel as an artist? Or tell me, tell me more about that feeling that you may get from that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, it really kind of really depends. Um, you know, I think there are moments where there's a lot of complexity that can draw out um, many different uh, emotions and reactions in, in the audience and um, and which it's which in some cases I'm, I'm astonished and amazed each time I watch yeah. the film and listen to people's fee feedback about what it evokes in them and, and really each time I, w I watch screen the film with a different audience it's different it's different it's each something time. new right it's like there's a there's a collective energy that through all the, the the sum of everyone like watching the film in that room yeah. who is different who are different from the day before or whenever right. and so that that creates um yeah a, a certain um yeah it just it's just it it's just a different experience it's an unexplainable feeling it, yeah. is, it is an unexpl unexplainable feeling and so um yeah i i'm kind of astonished and um of course then there's that's one thing and the other is like on a more mundane level as I uh, intended something very specific just for like story terms yeah. and then people just completely flew over people's heads. Then I feel then like, you're oh, like, oh, I missed it. I, yeah, I kind of <laughs> failed as a filmmaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I understand those moments, but, um, but I think one more thing, which yeah. I think might be relevant for is just telling a bit about the story of how this film began and yes, how, it, how it changed, um, which, which was, so <clears throat> I went to Syria and, 2000, summer of 2010 to make a short documentary about traditional Sufi music in Syria 
Um, my father is Syrian, and um, I'd always wanted to make a short film about music there, the tradition there. And so I went there and made what was what I thought was kind of more of a traditional documentary with sit down interviews yeah. with um, many musicians and film per musical performances with them and Sufi ceremonies and and then returned to Canada and began editing. And it was around that time that the six months later, <clears throat> excuse me, six months later, the revolution began. Right and escalated into a civil war and the largest refugee crisis of our time. Right. Many of the, the musicians I had met fled and be, had become refugees in Turkey and in Holland. So it was around that time I realized, okay, there's a bigger story. There's a bigger story to be told here. Exactly. Yeah. And so then I changed the direction of the film to rather than being about the music itself to being about these three men. These three men, exactly. And, and there was kind of a large pool. I had, Well, there was a pool of musicians I had to draw, and then I narrowed it down to these three yeah. musicians and, and made it a more personal um, story about them, um, which in some ways, well, actually, I, I feel is, is gets at the raw emotion that I was trying to get to before yeah. more effectively through, through, through these three uh, people's, these three musicians' lives. Well, you know, tomorrow I'm going to I'm going to say mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, you know, that's it for our conversation today. Thank you for sitting with me. Thank you for creating this amazing film. And I wish you much success on on this film and the next films that you hope to put out. Hopefully I see your name in more lights. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for awesome. having me. Thank you.